If you're out in the job market, imagine a capability that has the ability to create a four minute podcast, a very engaging one, talking about your career. I'm going to play something for you and then at the end I'll show you how I did it. It's amazing. All right, so you want to dive into John Seaton's career, huh? Always up for a deep dive, especially when we're talking about a resume that's not exactly, shall we say, off the rack. Mm, this is more like uh, bespoke tailoring, right? Okay. We're talking Bell Labs as a starting point. Oh, Bell Labs. Now, that's a name that echoes through the halls of tech history. Not your average internship, right? If he started there, it tells you something about his technical chops right off the bat. This wasn't just, can you fix my printer? This was hardcore innovation central. And, you know, when you think about Bell Labs, you think, okay, this guy's going to be, like, deep in the weeds of research forever. Hold up in a lab, probably with a pocket protector. Right. right. But then, check this out, he makes a hard left. A plot twist. He goes to AT&T, client-facing role, consulting. It's like he went from writing the code to explaining the code. That's a fascinating pivot. It suggests a certain kind of, I don't know, fearlessness. The mm -hmm. ability to not just understand complex tech, but to make it make sense for the rest of us. Because let's be real, most of us see a circuit board and our brains just go, nope, but he's out there bridging that gap. Exactly. And that's gold, especially in a client facing role. You need that ability to translate tech speak into here's how this solves your business problem. Totally. OK, so hold on tight because the story takes another turn. Fast forward a bit and bam, he lands at Cisco. Cisco, talk about a tech powerhouse. Right. And it's not just any time at Cisco. This is when Unified Communications was about to go boom. Ah, yes. The era of, wait, I can video chat with my coworker in Australia. Exactly. But here's the kicker. Yeah. He goes from this broad support anything role to specializing in, you guessed it, Unified Communications. So instead of being a jack of all trades, He's becoming a master of this one very specific, very in-demand thing. Smart move. And maybe a little peek into his strategic mind. Oh, for sure. This wasn't just, oh, that seems interesting. He saw the potential of where the market was going, maybe even before it was obvious to everyone else. All right, so he's at Cisco, right place, right time. But then you see the results he's pulling in, and it's like, whoa, this is next level. Yeah, we're not talking about just, oh, he met expectations. This is exceeding them by, like, a landslide. 350% over quota, yeah. to be exact. I mean, what does that even tell you about someone? It tells you this isn't just about hard work, though I'm sure there's plenty of that. This is about vision, strategy, really understanding where the levers are. Dude, you got to know the market inside now, right? Yeah. Anticipate what clients need, maybe even before they do. Absolutely. And then you've got to get everyone on board. Because a number like that, it's a team effort, no doubt. And that's got to be something you see throughout his career, right? Because it's not just this one time. You look at the trajectory, it's consistent. Oh, for sure. The guy's a closer, plain and simple. Look at the number of seats he's won over from competitors time and time again. 90,000 here, 120,000 there. It's like he's got a magic touch. More like he understands what it takes to not just win a deal, but to displace the competition. That takes serious persuasion product knowledge. It's like, yeah, you've got the charm, but you can back it up. Exactly. He's addressing concerns head on, probably anticipating objections before they're even voiced. That's a valuable skill set. You know, it's funny when you look at his track record, it's easy to get caught up in the numbers. You know, totally. The guy's yeah. a sales machine. Right. But then you start to dig a little deeper past the bullet points and you see this other side of him. A bit more human. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like all these mentions of customer advocacy and being a trusted advisor. That's not just sales jargon. No, it speaks to a different approach. Building relationships, understanding the client's world, not just trying to close a deal. And isn't that key, especially in tech, where it can feel, I don't know, transactional sometimes? Oh, absolutely. People need to trust that you're in it for the long haul, that you're there to guide them. And it's not just talk either. Remember that user-generated marketing campaign he spearheaded? That's not something you see every day. That really stood out to me, too, thinking outside the box way back before everyone was doing social media marketing. Right. It's like he had his finger on the pulse of where things were going, not just in tech, but in how people connect. Absolutely. OK, so let's sum this up. We've got John Seaton, technical foundation from Bell Labs, client whisperer at AT&T, strategic closer at Cisco, but also this whole other dimension of relationship building and forward thinking. And the question is, how does all of that resonate with what you're looking for? What stands out to you as particularly relevant to your needs, your goals? Because remember, a resume is just a starting point. It's the conversation it sparks that really matters. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder those questions. Until next time, keep diving deep. 
So how amazing is that? Basically, all I did was I took my resume, put it in PDF form, and uploaded it to a program called Google Notebook LM. It has the ability to take any PDF that you upload into it and create a podcast with these two dynamic individuals talking about the content of that document. It can be something as dry as a data sheet. It can be a 50 page indictment that you want to you want summarized or it can be a resume like I just did. So imagine being able to give that to a recruiter or give that to someone that they can listen to rather than read because I like the uh, expansions that they do around your skills that may not necessarily come out in reading the text of your resume. So what do you think? Is that kind of creepy? Is it amazing? I'm interested in your feedback. So this is just another one of the tools that I want to bring to you that hopefully as a knowledge worker, you'll find it useful and it'll make your day just a little bit better. Take care.